Starting at number 10, we have the Dome of the Rock. It is considered to be one of the holiest sites for both Muslims and Jews, and it was constructed between the years 685 and 691 or 92 by Abd al-Malik, the most important Umayyad Caliph, as a religious center. At the center of the Dome of the Rock sits a large rock that is considered to be the place where the Prophet Abraham was prepared to sacrifice his son Ismail, according to Muslim theology. Muslims believe that the rock commemorates Prophet Muhammad's night journey when he was sleeping near the Kaaba, the angel Gabriel appeared to him and took him to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem. Non-Muslims are not allowed to enter the dome. From there, we move on to Paveglia. This is a small island and it's located between Venice and Lido. This place was once very populated, but in the 14th century, the bubonic plague arrived on the island and it became a quarantine colony for the victims. Venice exiled citizens with symptoms to this island. Bodies of those who passed away and those who were very, very weak and too sick to even do anything were burnt on massive pyres in the island center. In the 19th century, the place was used as an asylum, and there are many rumors that exist that a doctor conducted strange experiments on the patients here in the 1930s. And eventually, the doctor went completely insane and jumped off the asylum's tall bell tower. Though the bell in the tower was removed decades ago, residents claim to still hear its chimes echoing from the isolated island. Today, the place is considered to be haunted. Number eight leads us to Issei Grand Shrine. The shrine is dedicated to the sun goddess Amaterasu, and the shrine which is said to be the home of the sacred mirror is one of Shinto's holiest and most important sites. The general public is not permitted beyond the site of the thatched roofs of the central structure, which are actually hidden behind four tall wooden fences at the site. And tourists, on the other hand, are free to roam the forest, including its ornamental walkways dating back to the Meiji period. The shrine is rebuilt every 20 years to represent the Shinto tradition of the death and the rebirth of nature, and only the Japanese imperial family can access this ancient shrine. Number seven leads us to the very popular Area 51. A whole lot of conspiracy theories around this area. The popular name for the United States Air Force Base is Area 51, which refers to a map location. Groom Lake is a dry lake bed in the Nevada desert, 85 miles or 135 kilometers north of Las Vegas. What happens inside is extremely private. Members of the public are kept away by warning signs, electronic surveillance, as well as armed guards. Flying airplanes or helicopters above this area is also strictly forbidden. There's a whole lot of conspiracy theories surrounding Area 51. Some say that even extraterrestrial life forms are within the premises. Number six leads us to Snakes Island. Brazil's Snake Island is the only home of one of the world's deadliest and most endangered snakes. It's infested with 2,000 to 4,000 golden lancehead vipers, one of the world's deadliest snakes. Now, the venom of this snake can kill a person in under an hour. Local legends tell of horrible tales about the people who wandered onto the shores of this island from 1909 to the 1920s. A few people lived on the island to operate the lighthouse. However, another local legend has it that the last lighthouse keeper, along with his entire family, well, they passed away when a swarm of snakes slithered into their home through the windows. Whoa. Definitely staying far away from there. In at the number five spot, we have North Sentinel Island. The natives have kept this small island in the Andamans for themselves for over 60,000 years and have refused to communicate with outsiders. The Indian government protects the Sentinelese by barring anthropologists and tourists from entering. The Sentinelese also defend themselves by shooting arrows to anyone attempting to enter the island. Lascaux Caves comes in at number four. Located in France, the Lascaux Caves was discovered in 1940 by four teenagers from Montignac, Lascaux. 
The cave was open to the public for many years until it was closed in the year 1963. The constant influx of visitors, about 1500 per day, as well as the carbon dioxide and human breath began to degrade the prehistoric paintings in the decorated cave. The original Lascaux caves are now closed and to protect the UNESCO World Heritage Site, the cave is closely monitored. They do not want anything to happen to it whole lot of history inside of that cave. Another place surrounded by conspiracy theories is the Vatican Secret Archives. The Vatican Secret Archives contains state papers, correspondence, account books, and many other documents that are accumulated by the church over the centuries. In the 17th century, Pope Paul V ordered the separation of the secret archive from the Vatican Library. Only a few scholars have limited access to its records and the archive remains closed to all outsiders. Now, when we hear about this place, we usually think that this place has only cryptic documents available there. However, that's not all you'll find here. This is actually the largest collection of historical documents, so various types of documents are in the archive. Moving on now to number two, we have the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. This is the world's largest secure seed storage, and it's located 1,300 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle in permafrost. And it was opened by the Norwegian government back in February of 2008. Crates of seeds are sent here from all over the world for safe and secure long-term storage in cold and dry rock vaults. The responsibility of the vault is assigned to the Minister of Agriculture and Food, and the ministry coordinates daily operations with the Nordic Gene Resource Center and the Global Crop Diversity Trust, and it is advised by the International Council formed specifically to advise the seed bank. But some say there's more than just seeds that are stored in the seed vault. Now, coming in at the number one spot, we have the Bank of England vaults. This bank holds almost one-fifth of the world's gold, which is over 5,000 tons of gold. Now, the Bank of England has provided gold custody services to its foreign central bank and government customers since at least the early 20th century, allowing them to purchase gold on the London market and store it in the bank's vaults. All gold stored in the vaults of the Bank of England is in the form of good delivery gold bars or similar, each weighing approximately 400 troy ounces. Only people with the highest authorization are allowed to enter the vaults. Starting off with number 10 all the way down to number one. Our first place is the Svalbard Global Seed Vault in Norway. Located way up north, 1300 kilometers beyond the Arctic Circle, here's where you can find Find the world's largest secure seed storage. Now, it was opened up by the Norwegian government in February of 2008. From all around the world, crates of seeds are sent here just so that they can be held secure in very safe and cold dry rock vaults. Next up, we have Whites in London. White's is the oldest gentleman's club in London and it was founded in the year 1693. It's considered to be the most exclusive private club in London. This club was established for gentlemen's only, although there have been some exceptions made for Queen Elizabeth II on two occasions actually. Now the membership is limited to just 500 men only and the waiting list is said to be several years long. Remaining in England, we have the Queen's Bedroom. Buckingham Palace is always open to tourists, but the Queen's bedroom is off limits. Her bedroom is one of the most secure rooms in England, and security increased here in 1982 when a man by the name of Michael Fagan broke into the bedroom and saw the Queen in her nightgown. This definitely was ultra scandalous. They were wondering how could security be breached like this? Now let's visit Club 33 in Disneyland in Anaheim, California. Located at 33 Orleans Street, this membership is by invite only. And according to one of the members of Club 33, there's a $25,000 to $100,000 fee that's got to be paid in order to get a membership to the club, as well as a $12,500 to $30,000 annual fee. This is all dependent, of course, on the membership level that you choose. Club 33 was originally created by Walt Disney to entertain guests as well as his business associates. 
Next up, we have Room 39 in North Korea. Not that North Korea is the most sought after travel destination or anything, but there's still a lot of curiosity around Room 39. It's located inside of the workers' political party headquarters, and it's believed that there's a lot of illegal activity going on there that brings in a ton of revenue to keep the North Korean leaders well-fed and their pockets deep. If only some of that wealth was shared among the citizens. At the halfway point, we have Bohemian Grove in California. The Bohemian Club conducts a yearly July retreat for rich and powerful men to escape and be in nature. According to several sources, there's a druid ritual that's performed. Those who are part of the club have said that this is just to celebrate nature. But with so many rich and powerful men in one secret place, we can only wonder what else is happening. The next place is Paveglia in Italy. This small island is located within the Venetian Lagoon in northern Italy. Paveglia has been used as a fort, a quarantine station for the bubonic plague, and an asylum among other uses. Back in the year 1968, the psychiatric hospital was closed down and the island was abandoned. Paveglia is considered to be one of the most haunted places in the world as ghosts fill every inch and corner of the island. We journey into Ethiopia to the Church of Our Lady Mary of Zion. This is said to be the home of the Ark of the Covenant. Now, if you're not familiar, the Ark of the Covenant is a container that holds the tablets which the Ten Commandments were written on. The church claims to have received the Ark about 3,000 years ago when it was brought to them from Israel to Ethiopia, which was at that time ruled by the Queen of Sheba. But here's the thing, no one is allowed to actually go into the room where the Ark of the Covenant actually is to even check if it's really there, except for one monk who's not allowed to even leave the church. In that spot, number two is the Vatican Secret Archives, Vatican City, Italy. Buried deep within the walls of the Vatican, these archives contain historic documents, accounting records of popes, and a whole lot more. The archives are estimated to span over 52 miles. Other than a handful of staff who manage the archives, only qualified scholars who have to undergo an intense application process may enter. And rightfully so, given the church's long-standing history and Catholic Christianity being the largest organized religion in the world. Not to mention the numerous scandals that have emerged throughout the church. And now in at number one, definitely conspiracy theorists have a field day with this one. Area 51, Lincoln County, Nevada. The hidden military base is located in the Nevada desert and it's kept its real purpose a secret from the public for decades. Many people believe it's where alien testing and experiments are conducted. The outer land, of course, is open to the public. However, trying to access the forbidden areas would end very badly. The grounds are protected by mines and the military stands on guard, ready to take action. USS Pickering, and it was the first ship to really go missing in the Bermuda Triangle. Now, there are some kind of rumors that some ships have done it before, but this is the most well-documented ship. Now, it was a top sail schooner named after Timothy Pickering, who was the head of state. Now, on August 20th of 1880, it was supposed to go to the West Indies, where it was going to become part of Thomas Truxton's squadron. Now, the last time she was seen was on August 20th when she left Newcastle, Delaware. And after that, the ship disappeared. There there are many theories, but most believe that it was sunk in a gale in September with 90 people aboard. Because also at that same time, the USS Insurgent sunk because of the storm. Now, okay, we are talking about, well, incidents and accidents that happened in the Bermuda Triangle, but I'm quite curious of where the Bermuda Triangle got its name. This goes back to 1964 from an article written by Vincent H. Gaddis for the Ergosi magazine. Now, in the magazine, he had a general idea of where each point of the triangle was. However, scientists and other theorists have said, mm, well, it's in different locations. But as for the United States Board of Geographical Names, they don't recognize any of these points, and nor do they recognize the Bermuda Triangle itself. Now, for this next one, let's talk about the biggest disaster to ever happen at sea in the Bermuda Triangle. And that was of the USS Cyclops. This one was big. Now, it was a Proteus-class collier. And the story goes that on March 4th, 1918, the ship had lost engine power. And after that, the ship went down, and what makes this accident infamous is that 306 men were on board when she sunk. 
As a matter of fact, it was so infamous that the US Navy has titled it as the worst right. loss of life without combat reasons. Now, there are many different theories to suggest why the ship went down. One of the most popular being the fact that a central I beam became eroded and practically snapped the ship in two. Now, let's talk about the Carol A. Deering. This was another schooner ship. Now, she was carrying cargo on January 28th, 1921, and she was seen by the Cape Lookout lightship, and they had noticed that the crew was kind of milling about in areas that they shouldn't have, and the ship had received some damage from a storm. However, a few days later, the ship was found at the Diamond Shoals on January 31st. But this time, the ship was completely empty. Theories suggest that there might have been pirates that came and took over the ship. Others suggest that maybe a mutiny took place. Now, you know what? Next one, let's jump back to the USS Cyclops. You know, the one that we just talked about like one second ago. Now, remember how I told you she was a Proteus class ship? Well, she wasn't the only ship of her class to go missing in the Bermuda Triangle. As a matter of fact, her sister ship, the USS Proteus, was lost off the coast of St. Thomas with 58 people on board. And that was on November 23rd of 1941. But a month later, another sister ship to the Cyclops, the Nereus, was also lost. And that makes three out of four of the same class ship lost and probably due to the I-beam problem. Now, here is one that is so infamous, you probably already know about it. We're talking about Flight 19. This was a squadron of Avengers that went missing on December 5th, 1945. Now, these guys were just doing a training exercise. They just went out into the sea, and then they never came back. And that means 14 guys were gone missing. But what's creepy is not only did those planes go missing, but part of the rescue team went missing as well. They sent out two Martin PBM Mariner flying boats, and one of them never came back with 13 men aboard. Man, that is just weirdly creepy. I mean, sister ships going down and the rescue team going down as well. It's like, what is the Bermuda Triangle? Now, here's an interesting one. The USS Scorpion was a skipjack nuclear submarine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure hearing about a nuclear submarine going down to Bermuda is not a good thing. Mm. Now, in May 21st of 1968, she was the last reported about 50 miles south of Azores. But about six Six days later, she was presumed overdue. Now, after a big search, the Navy presumed her as lost and took her off the Navy list. However, she was found in October with her hull being split in two. Now, there's many different theories about how she went down. Some people think that, well, she got struck by a Soviet torpedo and went down. But some experts are saying, no, she went down because of a accidental explosion when they were testing a torpedo. Now, the L. Austin, this is a very weird story. Another schooner that during her voyage of 1881, the the crew noticed another ship with no crew aboard. What's with all these ships with no crew aboard in Bermuda? However, the captain of the L. Austin decided to split her crew in half and sail both ships back to New York. However, because of a storm, the two ships were separated and the unknown ship was never seen again except for one time. The L. Austin did reach New York on February 11th of 1881, which was an exceptionally long journey for her, which most of the time was taken up looking for the other ship. The Sulphur Queen. Now this this T2 tanker, she was converted in 1960 to carry molten sulfur. Now, she disappeared February 4th, 1963, somewhere south of the Florida Straits. Now, she had 39 crew aboard, and the U.S. Coast Guard determined that the ship should have never sailed due to terrible maintenance. Now, last but not least, we gotta take one of the most recent accidents. The SS Alfaro has been the worst accident in 33 years. Despite the fact that we even have all this modern technology and GPS, they just don't know what happened. Happened. Now, on October 1st of 2015, the SS El Faro lost engine power and was taking on water. Now, the captain did radio out saying that they did contain the flooding, but however, her emergency beacon was activated shortly after and the ship was never heard of again. Now, although, like I said, they contained the flooding, it was her engines that determined the fate of the ship. Because at that time, Hurricane McQueen had turned into a Category 3 hurricane. And that thing was just heading her way. Eventually, the whole ship lost contact around 7.30 a.m. and about a a month later, they did find her wreck 15,000 feet below of where her last position was and she was hiding in a very dark spot of the ocean. Now, although there's tons of cargo laying about, there has been no trace of the crew. Back in the year 1989, a man by the name of Bob Lazar claimed that he had been hired to work as a researcher at a part of Area 51 called S4. Now, this was such a secret that he and other workers were taken there 
on a bus and the windows were completely blacked out so they couldn't know where they were going. Bob Lazar claimed that he saw things like flying saucers as well as antimatter reactors that would power these flying saucers all fueled by a red substance that was known as Element 115. Bob was later fired from his job after he was caught talking about this with friends. Now another person who only goes by the name Victor claims to also have worked inside of Area 51. And back in 1997 he said in a radio interview that he had witnessed an alien interrogation and he even provided some fuzzy video footage that supposedly shows a human police officer trying to communicate telepathically with an alien from outer space. Now this extraterrestrial being apparently was flying an aircraft and it was shot down by the US military. Another conspiracy is that people believe that alien autopsies are conducted at Area 51. There have been Area 51 autopsy videos that have surfaced since the 90s and then later on there was a 2012 DVD release called Alien from Area 51, the alien autopsy footage revealed. Now this got a lot of people curious because it started off with a warning that said, warning, graphic material. Other footage surfaced in the year 2014 and this apparently showed a four foot tall alien that was partially dissected and his head looked like one of those insect heads. Creepy. Another popular conspiracy theory is that secret government meetings happen at Area 51 and these meetings are where they discuss things like creating a one world government where the planet would be ruled by humans as well as extraterrestrial beings. MJ-12 as it's referred to by conspiracy theorists supposedly started as a blue ribbon panel of scientists and military leaders that was created by President Harry Truman back in the year 1947 and this was shortly after the crash of an alien spacecraft near Roswell, New Mexico in the United States. MJ-12 somehow made contact with the aliens and scheduled a meeting between them and the president. This then led to a deal where the United States got some extraterrestrial alien technology and in exchange the aliens got to get away with abducting humans as well as animals to conduct their own experiments on them. Now a lot of you probably heard this that the moon landing was staged. People believe that it was staged at Area 51. This conspiracy theory was brought up by a conspiracy writer by the name of Bill Casing and he says that NASA scientists couldn't get a man on the moon in time so instead of being all embarrassed about it they staged the moon landing. Carefully thought out plan or just a plain dumb conspiracy theory? Let me know what you think. Was the moon landing staged or not? Or do you believe it actually happened? Sound off down below. There's also believe that weather manipulating weapons are being created at Area 51. As well as probably the biggest conspiracy theory surrounding Area 51 is that there actually is nothing happening at Area 51. There's a British journalist and filmmaker by the name of Mark Picklington and he says that over the years the United States Air Force has worked a lot to spread the belief that UFOs have crashed in America and that the government has been hiding advanced alien technology. But he says this was all intended to divert the attention away from the actual experimental aircraft as well as other technology that the government is actually developing and it's really the government behind these weird conspiracy theories so that they can confuse the masses and continue to get away with what they're doing. The government would never, ever lie to its people. Never. No, they could not do such a thing. After the death of her husband and child, Sarah Winchester, the wife of a rifle maker's son, consulted a seer who proclaimed her family had been killed by the ghosts of those who died of bullets from her family's guns. The seer suggested that only perpetual construction on the family's mansion could nullify the spirits. So that's what Sarah Winchester ordered. Workmen labored on the property every hour of every day for 38 years. The 160 room estate in San Jose, California was built entirely without the aid of blueprints and it's truly bizarre. Some of the creepier features are staircases that lead nowhere, doors that open to brick walls, or sudden 10 foot drops, and a window with an etched glass spider web motif. You definitely don't want to get lost in this maze of a house. 
Let's make our way over to Poveglia Island in Italy. In the South Lagoon between Venice and Lido sits the small Italian island of Poveglia. In 1348, the bubonic plague arrived in Venice and Poveglia Island became a quarantine colony. Venice exiled many of its symptom-bearing citizens there where the dead and those too sick to protest were burned on giant pyres. In the late 1800s, the area's mentally ill resided in an asylum on Poveglia. There are rumors that in the 1930s, a doctor performed strange experiments on the patients here. Eventually, the doctor went mad and threw himself from the asylum's tall bell tower. Though the bell in the tower was removed decades ago, locals still claim to hear its chimes echo from the lonely island. Today, the entire island is abandoned. Locals and tourists are prohibited from visiting and fishermen steer clear of the accursed place. Italian construction crews attempted to restore the former hospital building, but abruptly stopped without explanation, leaving locals to speculate that they were driven away by by the island's dark forces. Next, we're going to be talking about Raynham Hall in England. Raynham Hall is an estate in the Norfolk, England, haunted by the Brown Lady. The estate is supposedly haunted by Dorothy Townsend, who was abused by her husband, Viscount Townsend, in the early 1700s. According to the legend, Dorothy's husband married her in 1713, then locked her in Raynham Hall. He supposedly buried her alive in 1726. Her ghostly appearance on the property in the 1820s caused all the staff to permanently leave the estate. In 1936, two photographers captured the most famous ghost picture of all time, showing the brown lady on the oak staircase in the main hall. Photography experts say the photograph is genuine and there is no explanation for the apparition. All right, let's take a trip to the Lizzie Borden House, USA. Today, this allegedly haunted bed and breakfast in Fall River, Massachusetts is the site of a gruesome and highly publicized murder that occurred in 1892. Although she was acquitted, Lizzie Borden was suspected of murdering her father and stepmother with a hatchet in their unassuming home. Although there wasn't enough evidence to convict her at the time, suspicions of her guilt remained. Since then, guests have reported all manner of strange sightings in the house. For anyone intrigued by unsolved crimes and brave enough to risk an encounter with the supernatural, this is an ideal destination. All right, up next we have Casa Loma in Canada. From strange apparitions to spooky voices and unseen grabbing hands, Casa Loma Castle in Toronto, Ontario, Canada has more than its share of ghost stories. Staff and guests at the historic castle have shared enough stories of seeing a mysterious lady dressed in white on the second floor, hearing the mutters and sighs of a crotchety man near the stables, the appearance of a man tending to the gardens near the indoor conservatory, the sound of children's voices when no children are around, or the feeling of being grabbed or pulled in the tunnels leading to the stables. These and other paranormal experiences have gained the castle a reputation as a supernatural hotspot. The castle even offers ghost tours led by Canada's most haunted. Nature lovers might not be so in love with this one, Tao Don Park, Vietnam. Tao Don Park in Ho Chi Minh City is a paradise for those who love natural beauty in the day, taking walks amidst tropical trees, but by night, a different feeling overcomes the park. Considered one of Vietnam's most haunted spots, Tao Don Park is said to be haunted by a ghost who roams the park in search of his lover. According to a tale, the couple were enjoying a picnic more than a decade ago when they were attacked. The woman ran off and escaped, but her partner was killed trying to protect her. There are frequent reported sightings of the man wandering the park at dusk, there one moment and then mysteriously vanishing the next. Creepy, right? All right, and coming in at number four, we have the Aqua. 
Akershus Fortress in Norway. This medieval castle once served as a defense stronghold for the city of Oslo, and it is rumored to be the most haunted place in Norway. The most popular sightings include a demon dog with glowing eyes that is said to guard the gates to the castle, as well as the ghost of a woman with no facial features who appears out of the darkness in a long robe. Used as a prison for Norway's most infamous criminals, the site of many World War II executions as well, the sounds of prison chains rattling can be heard around the property. All right, let's take a trip to Hoya Bachu Forest, Romania. Known by many as the Bermuda Triangle of Romania, this forest is considered the most haunted in the world. Warped trees fill the forest, their skeletal figures twisting and spiraling, an eerie silence fills the air, interrupted only by the footsteps of unseen figures. Visitors often report intense feelings of anxiety and the feelings of being watched while traveling through the forest. Some of the most common sightings include ghosts, unexplained apparitions, faces appearing in photographs that were not visible with the naked eye, and even rumors of alien encounters. All right, let's continue our journey with Lawang Sewu, Indonesia. The former railway building and World War II prison is believed to be the most haunted place in Indonesia. Indonesia. Among the many ghosts that have been reported here, the most popular are the Dutch woman, a headless spirit, and a Kuntalanak, a female vampiric ghost in Malaysian and Indonesian mythology. It is here that prisoners and prisoners of war were tortured and hung from iron beams in the ceilings. It is rumored that guests who stand below these beams are in for a haunting experience. Many of the locals refuse to enter this house for fear of a ghost attaching themselves to them. They warn all those who wish to visit this building. However, this has never deterred the visitors. Visitors have reported hearing pained cries and anguished screams coming from the base. Basement. And all the way down at number one today, we have the Island of the Dolls in Mexico. Xochimilco, Mexico is primarily known for its Island of the Dolls. This tiny island is famous for the hundreds of decaying dolls and doll parts hanging from trees and scattered among the grass. Although it looks more like a horror movie set than anything else, the island used to be the actual residence of a now deceased man named Julian Santa Barrera. After finding a dead girl's body in a nearby canal, Barrera collected and displayed the toys in the hopes of warding off evil spirits. The disturbing sounds of crying children have been heard by those brave enough to venture the island. 